This is your Barbados Today Morning News Update for Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carol Williams. An alarm is being raised about the arrears on Barbados' foreign debt and is coming from former Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs, Jepta Ince. The ex-senator told a Democratic Labour Party meeting over the weekend that the situation is so serious that it could lead to the devaluation of the Barbados dollar. I am saying tonight, and I want the Minister of Finance to come and tell me that I am a liar. Because there are no reports, the Accountant General report will tell me there are none. So I have to sit down and do my calculations. And my calculations show me, I'm going to repeat it, that we are running $143 million on our international debt. And I am sending out a warning to the Barbados Labour Party, to the Prime Minister. You, you hear, they don't talk about, don't talk about the arrears. You realize that nobody talks about the arrears, even the central bank don't talk about the arrears on the international debt. And I am saying to them, deal with those arrears. Because every country in the world that defaulted on its international debt and ran arrears had a devaluation. The DLP meeting at the St. Michael School came a week after the ruling Barbados Labour Party held its own rally to celebrate its one-year anniversary in office. DLP President Verla de Pisa assured that the party has been hard at work fixing the problems that led to its resounding defeat at the polls. Whilst we deal with our internal matters, there is no way while I stand here that we will be abandoning the people of Barbados. Thank you for the opportunity, because that's how I see this. The opportunity of a clean slate to sit back, re-evaluate the position, understand where we are and where our country is at, and start plotting the future of this country. Because for certain, For certain where we stand right now is quicksand in our time scale. We are being sucked under. But hold your head up. We are on our way. On another matter, the DLP is storing support behind nurses who've objected to the shift system at the two proposed 24-hour polyclinics. It is not that we don't see the wisdom and the efficacy of a 24-hour period. You remember when the Democratic Labour Party tried that at the Brantford Tate Polyclinic? They would like you to believe that this is new stuff. We tried that, but we understood staffing issues, security concerns, needing to have the right medication and equipment in order to be a fast response. All of these were critical issues that we took on board. And it wasn't about bullying through and pushing through the crowd and insisting that things must be done. It was about listening, not just rubbing shoulders and getting black and blues. On to other news, many exhibitors at the just-ended Barbados Manufacturers Exhibition, BIMEX, are reporting disappointing sales, and they believe it's due to the economic conditions in the country. They also complained about the number of people touring the three-day exhibition at the Lord Erskine Sandiford Centre. The event featured over 200 exhibitors this year, with a heavy focus on the services industry. Minister of International Business and Industry Ronald Toppin says government is hoping to have an in a national industrial policy in place by the end of this financial year as part of efforts to revive the manufacturing sector. Manufacturers have been crying out for a number of years now uh, for the need for, for some help. We have seen a significant decline in the fortunes of the sector certainly in the last decade or so where they look at the number of people employed in the manufacturing sector the number of companies in the sector, the level of investment in the sector, or the contribution of the sector to our gross domestic product. All of them have declined significantly over the last 10 years or so. So our plan is to cease having a situation where we just respond 
after the issues and concerns raised by manufacturers in a knee jerk sort of construction here, the movement has some strategy for the sector by way of the introduction of a national industrial policy. The outgoing president of the UN General Assembly is praising Barbados for its ban on single use plastics. Maria Fernanda Espinosa says the move is commendable and she is hoping that Barbados doesn't stop there. She's hoping the country and others in the region will take further steps to beat plastic pollution. There are several countries that have already banned, uh, for example, single-use plastics uh, in, in, uh, in plastic bags. Uh, I understand uh, that Barbados is one of the countries that have banned um, uh, plastic bags, for example, and this should be you know, an incremental progress towards uh, plastic bottles, plastic cups, styrofoam uh, as, uh, as Antigua and Barbuda has done. So this is expanding, so uh, the wave is expanding and I think that very soon we can uh, really uh, make sure that the Caribbean community, the Caribbean countries, the Caribbean people would be leading, you know, worldwide to be a, a, a single-use plastic-free zone. West Indies head coach Floyd Reefer insists his batsmen are up to the challenge of teaming England's electric pace bowler, Jaffa Archer, in the World Cup clash on Friday. Archer was born in Barbados to a British father and played for West Indies on the 19s before declaring his allegiance to England earlier this year. Speaking after yesterday's match against South Africa was abandoned due to rain, Reefer said he's confident they have a game plan to combat the threat posed by Archer. We knew Joffa from a from long time. He's from Barbados, where, where we're from. So we know him from on the 15, on the 17, on the 90. So he's not new to us. Yes, um, he's bowling he's bowling quickly, but there's, there's nothing that we're not accustomed to. You know, we're looking forward to the challenge. So we'll see how it goes on Friday. And that familiarity with Joffa, do you think that will add a little bit of spice and entertainment to the contest? Well, we're entertainers. We are here to entertain us. Right? So the players that come out, they're entertainers. But yes, you know, we'll have a good game. I'm sure Joffa will be, be chomping at the bit to come at us and we'll be, you know, we'll be ready for him. There's regional and international news after this short break. To the region, the registration of Venezuelan migrants enters its final week in Trinidad, and those seeking refuge have been reacting to concerns from Trinidadians about the impact they could have on crime and NIS deductions. We get more in this CNC3 News report. Just two days after a Venezuelan woman was shot and killed in Waterloo, allegedly by a Venezuelan man, hundreds more gathered in a search of a better life outside the Queen's Park Oval today. All of us uh, are doing something bad, right? Robbery, prostitution, um, and dealer, you know, bringing guns, everything. Uh, that is not, not true. They say while nationals may be worried about Venezuelan criminals migrating to TNT, many of them just want to make an honest living. Some of these people, you, you ask them, hey, what are you up to? Why you, why you, why you work or whatever? They, they, they will answer you, hey, no, I am a cook, I am a mechanic, I am a, a worker, building everything, right? So it's a mistake to think that all of us are doing something bad. Those in line also waiting on the government's decision to exempt registered Venezuelan nationals from paying NIS contributions. They were mixed reviews. And finally, on the international scene, around a dozen British Conservative MPs formally threw their hats into the ring yesterday in the fight to replace Theresa May as party leader and prime minister. Her former foreign secretary, Boris Johnson, is widely seen as the runaway favourite, as we hear from France 24. 
Odds-on favourite for the top job is former British Foreign Secretary and Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. He's popular with the Tory grassroots and ultimately it will be those party members who have the final say. He's vowed Britain will leave the EU deal or no deal in October. Over the weekend, he said he would refuse to pay Britain's 40 billion euros Brexit bill if Brussels didn't offer better terms on withdrawal. That didn't go down well in France. A source close to President Macron said not paying would be the equivalent of a sovereign debt default. Next up, there's Michael Gove. His chances are looking considerably weakened after revelations over the weekend that he used cocaine several times more than 20 years ago. The environment minister, a Eurosceptic, famously stabbed Boris in the back last time out, withdrawing his support at the last minute to announce his own candidacy in the 2016 leadership contest. Then there's Jeremy Hunt, once a Remainer, now firmly in the Leave camp. He's vowed to renegotiate the agreement May struck with Brussels claiming on Sunday that he'd received encouraging signals for such a move from German Chancellor Angela Merkel. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidustoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as Quinplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. We can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Carol Williams. Have a good day.